Hello class, welcome to another lecture in soil mechanics. So in this lecture, we will be discussing about the Atterberg limits. So there are four states in which the soil can be. First is the solid state, then the sol semi-solid state, the plastic state, and the liquid state. So as the water content rises, the soil goes into these states. So, the transition point between the solid and semi-solid state is called as the shrinkage limit, denoted by SL. And then from semi-solid state to plastic state, the transition point is called the plastic limit or PL. And lastly, from plastic state to liquid state, the transition point is called the liquid limit or denoted by LL. So, these three limits are water contents. And all in all, these three limits are called the Atterberg limits. So, it is named after Albert Moritz Atterberg. So, he is the one who conducted about the study about those limits. And first, let us discuss the liquid limit. So, again, the liquid limit is the moisture content at the point of transition from plastic state to liquid state. So there are two um, methods in determining the liquid limit. First is the use of ASTM D4318 or the standard test methods for liquid limit, plastic limit, and plasticity index of soils. So this uses the cup device or the Casa Grande liquid limit device. So, in this method, the moisture content or the liquid limit is the moisture content in percent required to close a distance of 12.7 mm or half an inch along the bottom of the groove after 25 blows. So, another method is the BS. 1377 or British Standards of 1377 which is the Falcone method and it uses this um, apparatus the Falcone apparatus and in this method the liquid limit is the moisture content at which a standard cone of apex angle 30 degrees and weight of 0.78 newton will penetrate a distance of 20 mm in 5 seconds when allowed to drop from a position of point contact with the soil surface. So, I will be um, providing you some videos from YouTube about the conduct of the liquid limit test using ASTM D4318 and BS1377. So, but in this lecture, we will be focusing about the liquid limit using the ASTM D4318. And, by the way, there are two methods under ASTM D4318. Method A is the multi-point liquid limit. And method B is the one-point method to determine the liquid limit. So, we will be focusing about um, focusing in the method A. So, under method A, a soil path is placed in the cup and then the, de the depth of the soil path at the deepest point of the cup should be 10 mm. And it is spread using a spatula until the surface is approximately horizontal and it must be ensured that air bubbles are eliminated. 
So, using the standard grooving tool, a groove is cut at the center of the soil pot, and then the cup is lifted and then dropped using the crank operated gum from a height of 10 mm. So, the rate should be 1.9 to 2.1 blows per second until the two halves of the soil pot come in contact at the bottom of the groove along a distance of 12.7 mm or half an inch. So this method is performed at least three times with varying moisture contents and with the number of blows required to achieve the closure is varying between 15 and 35. So the test results are plotted in a semi-logarithmic paper. So suppose that we have already um, conducted the experiment and these are the data gathered. So there are four trials, um, the number of blows and the water content. So in the first trial, the water content is 45.22%. 38 blows. So notice that 38 and 14 exceeded the um, prescribed number of blows in the ASTM. So this is only for the sake of example. So normally, you will do this manually, but I will be showing the um, determination of liquid limit with the aid of Microsoft Excel for accuracy since the um, since the um, gathered water content are very close to each other. First, let us copy the data. So, the this should be plotted in a semi-logarithmic graph. So, the x values are the number of blows and it should be logarithmic and, and then the y are the moisture contents. So, you will insert a scatter chart. So, notice that the x and y axis are in linear, so we will have to change that. But first, let me um, add some titles in this chart. So, liquid limit calculation and then... moisture content number of blues and then
check the logarithmic scale for the horizontal axis. And the base is 10. And then, let us add some minor axis. And then the, the major. And then, as well as for the minor grid lines. So, another one, we have to add the trend line. So, when This should be approximately straight, so I'll set this as logarithmic. And then, so the liquid limits are now plotted in the um, semi-logarithmic graph, or the moisture contents versus um, number of blows rather. So, we will have to determine the water content at exactly 25 blows. So, in order to determine that, display the equation for the trend line. So, and we will use the values 29 and 20 since we are looking for 25 and so this is equal to 25 and then we are looking for 25. So, our liquid limit. Our liquid limit is equal to 45.35%. So, if you want to show 
that the in this graph that the liquid limit is um, 25 so let us hmm, suntile and then vertical so one and forty five point thirty five and then twenty five and forty five point thirty five and then for the vertical five five zero and then Hmm. So,
So, I don't know what is wrong with, but I have done this before. So, but the point is, I am trying to show that if we put a line in here and in here because this is approximately 20 uh, this is where 25 is and if you plot that so 25 from the trend line you will get 45.35 so it's up to you how to explore that and so there you have it the liquid limit is 25.35 and then so let's, let's just copy this one or for better presentation So this is what I am trying to do in the previous. So So this is the graph of the um liquid limit. So, the liquid limit is 45.35. So, the next is the plastic limit, which is the moisture content in percent at which the soil crumbles when rolled into threads of 4.2 mm or 1.8 inch in diameter. So, this is also under ASTM D4318 or the standard test methods for liquid limit, plastic limit, and plasticity index of soils. So, I have also provided a video from YouTube in conducting this test. So, please watch that. And then, lastly, of the Atterberg limits is the shrinkage limit so this is the moisture content at which the volume of the soil mass ceases to change or the transition point from this solid state to semi-solid state and it is given by or denoted rather by SL, which is equal to the initial mass or the wet mass and minus the oven dried mass all over the volume uh, mass of the oven dried soils. So so this is what? So this is equal to the moisture content and then the change in volume or the volume of wet soil minus the volume of oven dried soil all over the mass or the oven dried mass times the density of water so in the calculation of the shrinkage limit um, very small volumes of soil sample is used so therefore the units are in grams and cubic centimeter so we will use the density of water as one gram per cubic centimeter so
So, we have an example problem. We are asked to determine the shrinkage limit of the soil. So, again, SL is equal to the initial minus oven, uh, the wet minus oven dried all over the oven, dry, oven dried minus the initial volume minus the final volume all over the mass or oven dried mass times the density of water. So, our, init our initial mass, M1, or the wet mass, is equal to 44 grams minus uh, 30.1 grams all over 30.1. Thirty point one grams minus the initial volume, which is twenty four point six cc minus final volume fifteen point nine cc all over thirty point one grams times one gram per cc. So, we will get zero point seventeen. 28 or 17.2757%. So this is our shrinkage limit. So I have also included some soil indices. So first is the plasticity index, which is the difference between the liquid and the plastic limit of the soil. And then for every plasticity index, we have the corresponding um, description. And then next is the liquidity index, in which um, omega is the in situ moisture content. Minus the plastic limit all over the liquid limit minus the plastic limit. So, again, for the following range, we have the corresponding state of the soil and its um, brief description. So, the shrinkage index. So, this is the difference between the plastic limit and the shrinkage limit. The activity of clay which is the um, plasticity index all over the percent finer than 0 0.02 mm or the percent of the clay size. And then for every range, we have the corresponding classification. And then as well as for the shrinkage ratio, so, this is the oven dried mass all over the final volume times the water content. Then, for the specific gravity, so SR is the shrinkage ratio you can get from this one. And then, 
SL is our shrinkage limit. Next is the consistency index, the liquid limit minus the moisture content all over the liquid limit minus the plasticity index. And lastly is the flow index. So the moisture contents all over the logarithm of the number of blows. So I have forgotten to mention that the line we created, the straight line we created in determining the liquid limit is called as the flow curve. So flow, flow curve. So that is the line. in the determination of liquid limit. And then, the slope of the flow curve is called as the flow index. So, that is all for our discussion of Otterberg limits. So, for the last topic in our period, we only have the uh, mechanical analysis in which it contains both the sieve and hydrometer analysis and then the grain size distribution. So, I have decided to include the soil classification in the next, in the midterm because we are a bit Lacking of time due to other So again um, See you in the next video for the mechanical analysis and the green size distribution